This is Mr. Holsey of 8 Squared Sufficiently Understood Science, and today we're going to be talking about food webs. So the ultimate source of energy on our planet is typically considered to be the sun. This is because plants use photosynthesis in order to create their energy or create ATP, at least food for creating ATP. But in areas where there is no sunlight, such as the bottom of the ocean, there are other sources of energy. This is a process, in this case, called chemosynthesis, where they use chemicals and heat from geothermal vents in order to go through a similar process like photosynthesis. Both of these result in energy being put into organisms, being transferred to organisms, and then transferred down the food chain. These typically you will not see on any food chains. We will take a look at an example that does have it on there, but this is one of those understood concepts in science where we understand that the without the sun or these geothermal vents, there's no heat available to transfer energy. And so this is just kind of some background information. So a food chain is the path by which energy passes from one living thing to another. Keep in mind, this is not what eats what. This is the passage of energy. As you can see, we have the sun being our starting point right there at number one. You have, sorry, this plant at number two. So the energy is transferred to the plant. The plant is eaten by the grasshopper. Energy transfer. The grasshopper is eaten by the frog. Energy transfer. And then finally, the hawk is going to eat the frog and get the energy transfer. Now, in our next video on energy pyramids, we'll discuss what happens to this energy as it moves from one organism to the next. But we're going to keep it pretty simple right now. So in a food chain, each organism obtains energy from the one at the level below it. And in our next video, we'll talk about energy pyramids. When we go ahead and introduce... The, uh, the energy pyramid a little bit here. And so all the organisms that are down here are going to pass their energy to the next level, followed by the next level, followed by the next level. And we give these levels different names. They are called trophic levels. So at the bottom, trophic level number one, we are going to have our producers. At trophic level number two, we have primary consumers. Trophic level number three, secondary consumers. Trophic level number four, tertiary consumers. And these are going to be built on top of one another and energy transfers from one to the next. The producers are typically going to be, plant, are going to be plants uh, and they're going to be getting their energy directly from the sun. So like I said, these are going to be made up of producers and consumers, but also decomposers. Producers are plants. Okay, They can be algae and phytoplankton and they're going to get their energy directly from the sun. Consumers are going to be animals. And we can break these into three different categories as well. We have herbivores. Omnivores. and carnivores. And the herbivores are going to eat exclusively plants. Carnivores, meat, so other animals, and omnivores will eat both.
Then we have decomposers. These are going to consume biotic matter, specifically dead biotic matter, and they're going to recycle that matter back into the ecosystem. So examples of decomposers fungus bacteria and scavengers. So producers, also known as autotrophs, are going to get all their energy from the sun. And plants use it to make food through photosynthesis. And this is going to be located at the first trophic level. So if we have an energy pyramid, which we'll discuss more in our next video, it is going to occupy this bottom layer right here. And that's going to be our first trophic level. Consumers are going to eat producers and other consumers. Uh, these are known as heterotrophs. There are going to be three levels of consumers. And so on the energy pyramid, these consumers are going to occupy the remainder of these, of these levels. The primary consumers are going to be herbivores, worms, insects, squirrels, and they eat the producers. And so once again, herbivores means that they eat plants. And they're going to be located here at the second trophic level. And it's important to note that for all of the consumer levels, we could theoretically put an omnivore in there. Um, for example, if you were eating spinach or broccoli for dinner, you are playing the role of a primary consumer because you are eating vegetables, you're eating plants. The secondary consumers are carnivores. They're going to eat those primary consumers. Once again, this could be an omnivore. And they are going to be located right here at the third trophic level. Then we have tertiary consumers, which are also carnivores and obviously could be an omnivore. And they are going to eat other carnivores. And they're going to occupy the top level. At the fourth trophic level. Depending on how big the ecosystem is, it is possible to have another tier of quantiary consumers. Uh, it just depends on the ecosystem itself.
Now the last step in the chain is the decomposers. These are also known as detrivores. So this is going to begin recycling material when some biotic matter, and once again, biotic means living or once living. It's going to break it down. So whenever something that was alive dies, the decomposers get it and return the nutrients to the soil, breaking it down. Um, this also happens inside of you. Um, as you're digesting food, there's bacteria decom decomposers that help break down the food uh, as it passes through your large intestines. And once the decomposers return the nutrients to the soil, the essential molecules and elements get returned to the producers and the process begins again. These really do recycle. Now, food chains are very simple, but they're not realistic. And that, so that's the reason why we use food webs. They're a much more realistic way of looking at the relationships of plants and animals in an environment because they, animals eat lots of different things and ecosystems are complex. And so this is a much more realistic way of looking at the relationships. It also shows that animals can occupy different levels in the same ecosystem. They may be a secondary consumer in one case and a tertiary consumer in another. These food webs are made of several food chains linked together, and they're going to use pictures, words, or arrows, and shows how energy flows in an ecosystem. And as you can see from our example here, it flows in a lot of different ways. Different animals eat different things at different times. One thing to really notice is the arrows. The arrow points in the direction of the energy transfer, not what ate what. That's a big misconception that we see uh, very often when it comes to food chains and food webs, is that people say, okay, the arrow is pointing to this, it means that ate that. But that's not true. The arrow indicates it's eaten by and transfers energy to. And so if, for example here, we see a duck right here, okay? If it was what ate what, it means that the duck would actually be eating the human, uh, which is not, not happening. Uh, instead, the duck is transferring its energy to the human. And once again, in our next video, we'll discuss how that energy is transferred and what happens to it as it goes along and why it's a pyramid. Now, like I said earlier, organisms can occupy multiple different trophic levels. And so we're going to use our hawk or e I'm going to call it a hawk. Uh, I'm sure it's probably an eagle, uh, but we're going to use this hawk as our example here. So we're going to take a similar path both ways. So I'm going to start here with the producer. In our first example, the flower is eaten by the bunny and transfers it, it, its energy to it. The flower will be our producer and it's on the first trophic level. The rabbit, however, is a primary consumer and is on the second trophic level. Then the rabbit is eaten by the hawk 
And now the hawk becomes a secondary consumer. And is on the third trophic level. Now let's take another route. Once again, we'll start with the flower. Our producer is eaten by the rabbit. The producer is still on the first trophic level. The rabbit is still a primary consumer on the second trophic level. But this time, the rabbit avoids the hawk for right now. Instead, the rabbit is consumed by a snake. That snake becomes the secondary consumer on the third trophic level. And then the snake is eaten by the hawk. So now the hawk is a tertiary consumer on the fourth trophic level. And so this shows how organisms can occupy multiple trophic levels depending on what they're eating. And it really goes to show just how diverse these ecosystems are and how food webs and food chains are, or food webs are much more accurate than food chains because the hawk's not always gonna be the tertiary consumer. It may play the role as a secondary consumer. And that's gonna do it for this episode. Uh, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. This has been Mr. Holsey for H Squared's Officially Understood Science.